like that it's thursday night and you know what that means it's party time with the video bros i'm bobby munson the man beside me he's the man with the angelic voice singing with me people papa smokes papa smokes happy thursday how are you doing brother happy thursday munson that was another good introduction thank you very much pleased to be here on a thursday night as usual man we never miss an episode ever and this is great we got an important one today and a topic that I'm going to love talking about because it's fresh in my mind. <laughs> it's fresh in our minds, and there's a lot to unpack here, Papa Spokes, because it was a wild time on Ooh. Saturday night yes. at PPW's most recent event. And again, uh, yes. if you are watching along live, make sure to be active in that chat. We appreciate you joining us live. We are live on X here tonight as well, too, Papa Spoke. So I just want to shout out to anybody watching over on X that if you are unable to make comments over on X, feel free to check out that ticker below. It's going to lead you on over to either Twitch or to YouTube where you can join in on the live conversation with myself and Papa Spokes. And, of course, great people like this, the third All video right. bro, who was there, rings, uh, there at the show ringside. Yep, he was standing room only, but he was there. And he was loud and he was proud. It's our boy, Masser. What's up, Basser? How you doing, brother? We've also got another brother from another mother. It's Andre right. representing Andre and Melball. Yo, how you doing, my man? Good to Yo, see Andre. you. Yo, <laughs> Andre. Bass saying, I'm pretty sure my nose is broken, my boys. Holy fuck. Are you kidding me, man? I if, Papa Spokes, have you seen the picture of Bass's nose yet? I have not. This is news to me. Remind me afterwards. I got to show you, but... Those mats at ringside. We got to talk about the goddamn mats at ringside. Usually we've got these anti-fatigue mats down at ringside. This time we had kind of the crash pads, the practice pads that the boys use uh, when they're first training and stuff like that, especially for when you're talking about taking bumps from the top rope, getting used to the feeling of it. That's what we had around ringside, making it a very soft kind of a walk, but also very hard to navigate as well, too. Our champion cutthroat, Colt Kelly, or well, we'll talk about that championship in a, in a little bit here, but Colton Kelly actually tripped up during his entrance there and knocked Bass in the nose with the PPW championship. So Bass messaged me later that night and said, Crash Crimson might have got hit in the face twice by the PPW championship in that main event, but Bass is the one showing the color Oh, cross his nose that he took there. Oh, in the man. oh, it's something else. I worked myself into a shoot in the line of fire. <laughs> he sure did. Yeah, I'll send you that picture right after the show there, Pop Smokes. You got to check this out. Uh, there, there's, there's, yeah. there's such a tremendous and delicious irony in that somehow that it wasn't like 
a fist or a hand or the wall. It was the PPW title that did that. It's yep. fitting somehow for Vassar that that's what he would be injured by. <laughs> that, that's, that's so fitting and so ironic. Bass manages to find a way to get himself picking up injuries at the PPW shows there, whether it was as a camera operator or as a fan. He's getting going home, Mark. Bass, your your wife's not going to let you come to these shows very much longer. You keep this up, my man. I mean, one time you go home with a red chest because you got me to chop you. Another time you go home with a bruised leg from a chair shot. Now you're going home with a busted nose at the hands of the champ. Damn, Bass, you're taking more of a chick kicking at PPW than some of the wrestlers are. But it's because he's fearless, you know? He's the fan that's going to get in there and see everything right up close with I, uh, you have to hand it to him. He's he's one of our best fans by a long shot. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and also one of the best uh, best dudes we know too. Good brother fo- to yes. us both. Um, I gotta know, Bass. I'm asking you right now, my man. You were there witnessing it on the other side of the fence. I gotta know from you what was the experience like? What was it like at the Great Canadian Rager? Eh, uh, I'll be I'll be standing from here on. Way easier to yell. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, hey, why yeah. not? You get those yeah. general admission tickets. You want to stand, yell. It's right by the beer. That's the best part. Bass doesn't have a very long walk to the beer. He doesn't have to protect a seat. So standing works. <laughs> Honestly, when I'm watching a show in the crowd, I, I kind of like standing. I like being able to be mobile. I don't like to be tied to anything or have my vision blocked anywhere. I I, I like standing. So that, that that's where I'd be for sure. <laughs> well, you know, you and I, Papa Smokes, do a whole lot of standing when it comes to uh, PPW shows. We're going to get it right into that right away. Amazing show, Rich King and Larry, Ref Ben, Colton losing was rough, but I know he will. Uh, we will get uh, revenge. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's start with the beginning of the show. We'll work our way to that main event, especially as people start to trickle in here so we can talk all about the controversy surrounding the belt. But we started off very interestingly. I, I got to mention no tag matches on this card, even though we're looking for tag teams to step up. We did have two teams in singles competition against one another. Uh, so we will talk about that. Uh, we had a lot of stuff kind of unfolding, and including Jack Pride starting off the show, coming out and calling out Riley Cruz, who he blames for their loss against the Clandestine Society. And this led to our opening match of the night, Papa Smokes. Very interesting that not only was Jack Pride upset with his tag team partner, even though we saw a great display from the two of them in that particular matchup. But here's the more interesting story. Riley Cruz picks up a massive victory over the established Jack Pride, who's been on a damn roll as of late. Riley Cruz with possibly the biggest victory of his career so far. Oh, undoubtedly the biggest win of his career. And this was this was surprising. I mean, the way that Pride called out Riley Cruz from the back, came out, grabbed the mic. And, and you know that Jack Pride can be very unpredictable and in, his, in what he does around uh, PPW, both in ring and on the mic and such. He's been a little wild. He's, he's a man of two minds. We know this, that... He's just a little off the cuff and a little unpredictable. So when he called out Riley Cruz, I, I feared for Riley, to be perfectly honest. I know he can handle himself in the ring just fine, but I felt pride was setting a trap for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's exactly what it sounded like. And boy, we got an awesome match out of these two. And pride being the complete veteran, he was taking it to Cruz for a long time in this match. But Riley Cruz has that undeniable head-banging energy that comes through. It's it's hard to put a leash on it. You can't you, you can't just hold it down. And man, he put on a real show against Jack Pride. Yeah, he did. As Bass saying, Riley had a great match. He was on fire. But same with Jack. And when, let's take nothing away. The match was solid. It was a great way to start the show off. Both these yep. two had a hell of a competitive matchup against each other. I think at times Jack Pride thought that he was going to absolutely mop the floor with with Riley Cruz because Riley mm-hmm. Cruz is inexperienced but Riley Cruz proved that he can hang with the best of them because again Jack Pride is no slouch he's one of the best professional wrestlers on the market here in western Canada one of the top names coming through PPW on a regular basis and someone who we both said on commentary 
could be eyeing up PPW Gold sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think undoubtedly is. Another thing I think that, that was highlighted in this match is that we've talked on this podcast before, and when we had Morris Waltz on, we talked about that little rivalry that goes on between Morris Waltz and Riley Cruz because they trained at the Prairie Pro Training Academy at the same time. They debuted in ring right around the same time. And whether the guys want to admit it or whether anybody else wants to admit it, I think we got it from both those guys that, yes, there is that little feeling of rivalry between the two of them. And this win, in my opinion, over Jack Pride puts Riley Cruz in almost a whole different category. It puts him ahead in this rivalry a little bit, which my man Waltz will not like to hear at all, but he's going to have to make his chest move next. He's going to have to put in an impressive match and get a good win against quality opponent in uh, quality opposition in PPW if he wants to keep his spot going in this little unofficial rivalry that we know exists between these two rookies. Well, we know too, Morris Waltz called out Riley Cruz once again prior to the mm -hmm. event. Morris Waltz not featured on this particular card. Again, <clears throat> asking for that matchup, not getting it. I can imagine there's got to be a little bit of bad blood brewing underneath the skin of Morris Waltz as he continues to be kind of ignored and overlooked by possibly by PPW management. Do you feel that this could unfold and brew into something very dangerous? Because we know how dangerous Morris Waltz can be. How long before he completely snaps and takes matters into his own hand? I think it's like putting a match next to a barrel of gunpowder, to be perfectly honest. I have all the respect in the world for Morris Waltz, all his skills, all that great personality and, and competitive nature that he has. But you can also see that He's a violent man. He's somebody that wants what he wants, and he's going to go out and get it no matter what. I've spoken with this man backstage. He's razor-focused, laser-focused. He's got everything together, and he wants to be the next big deal in PPW. He is absolutely not going to stand for Riley Cruz getting any of that spotlight over him. Yeah, you bet. And you never know. This the match could ha happen. It could happen as early as August 17th. You never know what's going to happen with PPW. Make sure, again, if you are in Saskatoon or going to be in the Saskatoon area on Saturday, August the 17th, make sure to get your tickets to join us live for the next PPW event, which will be the go-home show to our big event of the year. That is going to be on Saturday, October the 26th, when PPW presents the Ring of Horrors 3, where we're going to be looking for the first ever PPW Tag Team Champions, probably yeah. having our annual... Uh, what do we call them? The gimmick battle royal pop smokes. Uh, I'm sure that will be pre present at that big show as well, too. But going back to the Great Canadian Rager, uh, the second match of the night and something that Bass actually mentioned earlier here in the evening about a couple of debuts. Let's first shout out to Ref Ben for his return to PPW. We haven't seen Ref Ben in a long time. Oh, yeah. Happy to see him there. Ben, great dude. Same. You know, I still remember back in the early days of PPW where Ref Ben had to pull an all-nighter. He was the ref in all, like, seven or eight matches that we had there that night, and it is blistering hot in that arena. It doesn't matter if it's minus 40 Celsius outside in Saskatoon. It is hot as hell inside that building. And poor Ref Ben that night. I know Bass was tossing him bottles of water all night long after every single matchup to keep the man hydrated. He's, he's a trooper, but... You know, shout out to all the officiating that goes on in PPW and a shout out to all the unnamed uh, heroes that are behind the scenes, serving booze, taking tickets, all that kind of stuff. Amazing work that you all do. But I want to talk about Rich King and Lumberjack Larry here, Pop Smokes, making their PPW debuts in a singles match against each other. These two guys, very well known in the Canadian wrestling scene, done a lot of work over in Love Wrestling, RCWs, you name it, they've done it over there. Finally getting their opportunity here in Saskatoon with Prairie Pro Wrestling. I was very happy to see them. Um, <laughs> as, as Bass, there's a lot of touch and tips going on in PPW lately between the Brotherhood, between the Rich Kings, between the Larry, Dumber Jack Larrys. There's a lot, a lot of tip touching going on for sure. Uh, but I, I want to talk to you about this, Papa Smokes, because again, I, 
I've had Lumberjack Larry on a show before, chatted with him, know him a little bit. So, you know, I had a little bit of pre-knowledge of his work going into this whole thing. And of course, Rich King, I've seen his work through uh, different various programs that are available on YouTube and different streaming services uh, so far. Uh, also familiar with the fact that he does training. He's a trainer out in the Edmonton area. He trains our good friend, Andre C., who's been kicking ass with his training regimen under Rich King. So yes. you know what? if you're in Edmonton, hire Rich King. He's going to turn your goddamn life around. And that that's an absolutely free plug just for, just for Rich King being an awesome dude. I want to know what you thought, Pop Smokes. What did you think of the debuts of Rich King and Lumberjack Larry in this matchup? I, I liked them a lot. Uh, kind of like you, I, I didn't have... I hadn't watched so much stuff from either of these guys. Um, I knew who Lumberjack Larry was, but I hadn't seen his matches. Rich King, I also know. I love his fitness tips that he gives out for free. and, and All of that makes perfect sense. And looks looks like he could put you on a very good program. I loved this debut. Rich King comes out um, looking like he's already over. What a great physique on that guy. What a great set of legs. Giant thighs. He looks like a wrestling guy. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, comes out thumbing his nose to the fans a little bit, but not overly. And then here out comes Lumberjack Larry. Looking kind of wild, looking kind of wacky. He's got the nice plaid lumberjack gear and everything and the nice hat. The fans seem to find him funny and, and amusing right off the bat, as did I. And these two put out put on a pretty good little match, yeah. especially for a second up in the evening, especially for a first appearance in PPW. Our fans are awesomely open to having new people which is which is great because it, everybody wins, right? They they get to perform in front of a new audience, and this audience gets to see a bunch of their favorites and some new people too that they can they can get acquainted with and get to like. I think the PPW Nation's quite down with Lumberjack Larry by the look of it. I can yeah. see that having a lot more success in the future as well. So I would welcome them back. Same thing with Rich King. Uh, a villainous type wrestler, but he looks good. He looks like a wrestler. He's got that body and he means business when he's in the ring. I love this Munson and I would welcome having both of these guys back to PPW anytime, especially if they put on a good match like they did Saturday night. Oh, for sure. Again, we put this, this is very similar to reminding me of, you know, about a year and a half to almost two years ago now, when we brought in Barack Garani and Cutthroat Colton Kelly in a mm -hmm. debut match against each other. And look what it's done for the two of them. Colton Kelly, yeah. the PP, he goes on to PPW Gold. Barack Garani not only has been you know successful in singles competition, but has time and time again been entering into the tag division. And last time out, when he tagged with Shiki, man, that's got the world talking there, Papa Spokes. That finishing move known as murder is the talk of the town when it comes to professional wrestling right now deadly as hell absolutely and that, that's a great parallel that you make because when ppw started we were using lots of saskatchewan talent but there there isn't so much to pick from sometimes not a full roster there so we always go to our friends next door in alberta and through various people that we've had before we started getting some new people like cutthroat colton kelly like Barat Gorani and now, <clears throat> excuse me, Rich King and Lumberjack Larry. It's awesome. Those guys all talk and they all like PPW. PPW is getting recommended to other wrestlers in other cities. Make the trip. You get a hot crowd. You get a nice payout. And you have good competition to work with in front of people you don't usually work with. You get your name out there. And I just love this little uh, trading network that we have going on <clears throat> excuse me with the uh with the wrestling companies in edmonton works out very nicely and the fans are all the winners in the long run oh hell yeah it's it's great to be uh, sharing that talent is andre saying he named that move andre i did not know this story my man message me message me and let me know that story a little bit later on or next time we're hanging out brother i gotta i gotta hear all about that because again That's i got so cool. I, I got dragged aside i got grabbed by the gullet here i got pulled like this 
by uh, by Barack Garani, and he told me, Munson, you listen up. That move we did tonight, that's called murder. You remember that name. And I, I was a little fearful that I was going to get murdered at that point in time, too. I, I expected the champ to suddenly be there. Well, I, I don't even want to call him the champ. God damn, Sheiky. Uh, I expected Sheik Shabazz <laughs> to be behind me to be able to pull me out back out to the ring so the two of them could murder me. And I'm sure, I'm sure Sheik Akbar Shabazz has probably had thoughts of uh, being able to lay the hurt on me before. Uh, so I wouldn't be shocked about it, Papa Smokes. Um, yeah, quite scared of him. Uh, but let, let's move on to the next match here uh, that we got to talk about. The next match on the card, it was Bucky McGraw one-on-one with Saskatoon's favorite wrestler all along, all along, nice guy, all around nice guy, I should say. And I like to call him now main event Phil Deadly. So, um, AKA Uncle Phil, as the fans like to call him, but I like to call him main event Phil Deadly, who's been on a damn roll lately in PPW Pops, folks. He's been doing some great stuff, but unfortunately the odds against them when you got the brotherhood in your corner down at ringside and going one-on-one with Bucky McGraw didn't so so much uh air on the uh, on the good side for Phil Deadly at least the numbers were against him anyway for sure and I mean a one-on-one match against wrestling's most intelligent man Bucky McGraw can be kind of a tall order in the first place a lot of people think well I don't know, is he that good? Is he that strong? Is he that tough? Yeah, he really is, actually, because if you watch his matches, he chain wrestles the entire time. You get caught up in a whirlwind of wrestling moves, and it doesn't stop. It's move after move after move. He's got it all planned out. He's got it all thought out. And we, you and I have called many, many of, of McGraw's matches in the past People think, other wrestlers think, I'm going to get something in on him here and I'll I'll change the tempo there and I'll do this. No, if Bucky starts in on you, it may not stop. It's going to be a series of move after move after move after move till he pins you. And it's very difficult to get out of that vortex once you're in it. Now he's got the brotherhood on the outside of the ring. That just makes it even 10 times more difficult to put one over on Bucky McGraw. It, he's tough to beat in the first place, but now with these giant goons, the Brotherhood, standing outside the ring, helping him at any at any turn in the match that they feel he needs help, boy, it's a tough one. And Phil was in tough on Saturday night with this one. He was too. And uh, as Pastor saying, Phil, pop of the night, deadly. <laughs> yes, and no matter what, Phil always gets the pop of the night. Um, he was in, and that... That's the thing. Phil Deadly did come up with the victory, but that via disqualification, because as it looked like he was going to get the pinball victory over wrestling smartest man in come the brutality of the brotherhood, Jacob Creed and Dixie Dragon taking down uh, Phil Deadly and putting the hurt on him. Again, that's not looking very good with the brotherhood in, you know, this group of three, this brutal group of three, you've got the smarts of Bucky McGraw. And then you've got the absolute brutality of the Dixie Dragon and the crazed cowboy Jacob Creed. This is looking like a force to be reckoned with. Very much so. And I mean, Phil Deadly can't stand up to the whole brotherhood himself. You know who he needs months in is a return of Kid Chocolate, Mo Jabari. Do you remember what a hot tag team that was in years past in this city? Wow. I do, I do, Bob Smokes. It was fantastic. Um so yeah, I'm trying to remember what match we had that followed the Bucky match because there was another match that we had in between those two. Just trying to crawl who was the order of the matchups because I know from there where we go. Damn, Papa folks, I'm drawing a blank here. Let me let me just check the camera footage here so that we can hop into it. But you, I mean, you are right, and we are going to be continuing to talk about the Brotherhood here very very shortly because again, both of them. We're in singles competition as well, too, on this very night. And a lot to unfold about that. But, yes, let me just uh, double-check the camera footage, which will kind of give us an indication of what I'm missing out on. And I'm probably going to feel terrible. But, yes, my apologies. So, this time around, we did not get a, get a matchup where Colton Kelly couldn't make it. Because, or, sorry, Colton Kelly. Where Cannonball mm -hmm. Kelly couldn't make it. Cannonball Kelly was in the building this time around. No substitutes, no cannabis, Kelly. Kel <laughs> Cannonball Kelly was in the house, 
This time taking on Levi Knight, who was beaten by Cannabis Kelly last time out. This time going up against Cannonball Kelly. And again, Cannonball Kelly is on a different level of, of entertaining here. The fans love the hell out of this guy. They love Johnny down at ringside. But good God, even I got a little little bit worried when it came down to this, Papa Spose. I do recall when Levi Knight put his hands on Johnny Two Fingers. And I know Johnny's tough as nails. Don't get me wrong. But standing there ringside and watching Levi Knight do something as despicable as that, something inside of me made me almost lose the cameraman mentality and go into fight mode suddenly like you know come on you sob why why are you doing this like it's johnny two fingers motherfucker why would you do this to him come on but still nonetheless great great matchup and cannibal kelly continues to try to rack up more wins and maybe work his way back into the title picture as you know he had been very close on a couple of occasions of conquering the champion previously very, very close, and I could have swore that, that he was going to be a, our first or ba- or maybe second DPW champion because Cannonball Kelly can hang in that main event spot. Like you say, so, so entertaining, so accomplished in the ring, and Johnny Two Fingers just makes him better. I can also feel the way you were getting mad at ringside about, uh, about Johnny getting roughed up a little bit. I very much enjoy having Johnny at ringside. He's, a, he's such a funny guy, he's such a, a a bright light of enthusiasm around ringside. He always finds me in my camera and has some something funny to say into it. And we always, uh, you know, share a little high five or a little back slap or something. Just a great guy. Yeah. And you know, I I felt I wanted to jump in too in the slimy nightclub crawler. Levi Knight started trying to put his hands on on Johnny Two Fingers. Now, not like when El Asesino put his hands on Johnny Two Fingers. I'm not stepping into that one. No way, no how. But Levi Knight, I don't know, man. Very tough wrestler and a big guy and all that. But you better never try anything with Johnny Two Fingers. Not while the PPW Nation is around. No, not at all. That's a surefire way to get yourself beat up by the fans after in the parking lot on the way back. The cameraman, yeah, the cameraman too. That's true. Yes, again, uh, we have to we have to be as professional as possible, Papa Spokes. But there was a few times on this particular Mm -hmm. card, and as we get towards this main event, where I even felt that need to put the camera down and go into just my just being a regular person at that point in time and having that empathy for another human being because on more than one occasion i saw things that were getting under my skin where it had gone too far and a part of me wanted to put the camera down and say yeah i might not be a wrestler and every single person in that back room right now could kick the living shit out of me if they wanted to but i'm a big enough guy that if i needed to step in to take the bullet I could step in to take the bullet. And that's how I felt on more than one occasion on that night. Okay. Which matches are you talking about? This cannonball match in particular, but then later on in the main event too? The main event as well too. I'm talking about with Assassino's interference. And I don't care how dangerous Assassino is. I don't care how much of an SOB he is. And I don't care how much times he gives me the GFY hashtag which I know it means go fuck yourself, Assassino. I'm not stupid and everything. I don't care how many times you throw it out there, and I know you could kick my ass, but at the same time, the the human being in me wants to step in at times and step there and say enough is enough, right? And that's that's just how I feel, Pop Smokes. It's, it's a passion I feel when I'm standing out there, and I can't help it, but... We'll get to that in a minute. We are coming up to those matches very quick. We got to go through the, as Basser was talking about, the split tag matches. So those were the next on the card. We started off with Jacob Creed uh, in a one-on-one matchup against Mars the Specialist. So one half of the Short Kings versus one half of the Brotherhood. Uh, this match was absolute madness, Papa Spokes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Maybe yeah it one was. One of the strongest matches of the entire night. Mars definitely given up the size in this matchup but man he fought like a big man inside of there so he good. knew what to do to get under creed's skin and to knock the big man down off his feet he manages to break him down 
And then at one point, Creed absolutely just completely dumps Mars over the top rope. I'm right there. I've got the footage. I had to back out of the way as I just about had a short king dumped on my head in that matchup unexpectedly. And then from there, more madness ensues as Creed on the outside towards the fan barrier right where I'm standing. And Mars decides to moonsault his ass from the ring to Creed into the audience. Holy shit, Papa Smokes. I that was, was a little wild. Wow, I was fearing for my life. It was nuts. That was really, really wild. And, the, and you know, I sometimes talk about my side of the ring on, on the entrance ramp side, seeing a lot of action. Oh, you got some action that night on that <laughs> side, Munson. You don't have much room to move around there at all. Man, I don't on my side, but you have half as much space as I do on your side to move. Woo! It, it's nothing to laugh about, hey? Uh, uh, and that, that moonsault off the ropes by, by Mars and Specialist right into the crowd, I thought, like, I could hardly see it from my side, and I just thought, oh, my God, what what just happened here? Like, did he take the heads off those fans? What happened here? That was absolutely nuts. Well, and here's the thing. Is that barrier just moved back with the weight of Mars hitting that barrier big bastard just shoving it back smacking people in the knees the legs and everything but yet the ppw nation at ringside still having the time of their life they're getting beat up just as much as the guys are and they're having a good time and i want to bring this up here bass brings up a good point the mars is the future of ppw god he's good I don't disagree with this statement whatsoever. I think very highly of him. I think very highly of the Short Kings as a tag team. Clearly, they've become very over. But even in one-on-one -on -one situations, Mars has really proven how much he can hang with the top-notch professional wrestlers in the business. And again, talking about the future, it might be the future might be not very far off before we start seeing Mars competing in that singles title picture. Yeah, I don't think that's off the mark at all. In fact, that's a really good observation. And uh, the Short Kings themselves as a tag team are awesome. The thickness, Reed Matthews, is totally awesome as well. Yep. These guys are young, enthusiastic. They've already got a bunch of experience and a bunch of matches under their belt. But it's scary to think that the next five years, those guys are only going to get better at this. Like That's what's in crazy about it. Not only the in-ring stuff we're kind of talking about right now, but they can both talk, too. They both have personality and are funny. Listen to the Short Kings podcast right now on YouTube. There's another little free plug right there, <laughs> there <you go. laughs> because those guys are hilarious, and they don't have a script. They don't need one. No. They're just buddies joking around, talking. They get to some points, but uh, other, other than that, it's just two funny guys talking, and you know that's going to serve them well in the in the era of of uh, social media and making videos and posting stuff and splashing your personality all over your uh, platforms and such like that. I think that comment is right on that, that Mars and Reed Matthews might be the real big guys in PPWs at some point in the future. Awesome observation. Yeah, and Bass also observing if they split. Imagine the Sammy Owens, Ke uh, Sammy Zayn, Kevin Owens type match that they could have once they split because, again, of that friendship and that bond that they've created. Also, shout out to Thick Gaming over on Twitch where uh, you can catch Reed Matthews' work. Uh, speaking of Reed Matthews, he is in our next match. I also want to shout out mm -hmm. to uh, Reed Matthews' uh, amazing, wonderful wife that you could also see on the Short Kings podcast that does the filming for them. She was at the show, and again, because I've seen her on the podcast there, she came up saying, oh, I didn't get a stamp yet. Could I get a stamp? And I'm like... Well, I can give you one, but I know who you are already because <laughs> I think I might have made her a night by making her feel like a celebrity because, hey, why not? She is. She's on YouTube. She's just as popular there doing all the hard work. Oh, yeah. The boys. So big shout out to her as well, too. Wonderful, wonderful human being. Uh, but yes, up next, we have the thickness. Or I should have said, sorry, Mars just coming up a little bit short. Creed getting the victory in that one. And then uh, we end up having the thickness Reed Matthews versus the Dixie Dragon and before we talk about who won this matchup, and wow, this was an awesome matchup as well, too. 
I got goddamn dragon blood sprayed all over my ass, Papa Smokes. I'm standing there ringside with the camera, and that damn Dixie dragon gets in there. He sprays that dragon blood all over the air, and I got rained down on. I had dragon blood. I had it on my face. I had it on the camera. I had it on my arms. I found some on my chest later that night. It was on my goddamn legs. It was nuts. And what does the referee do? Come over here for a second. He wipes my camera lens off for me. Thanks, ref. I'm glad you got the camera around. What about the rest of me that's suffering through this disgusting dragon's <laughs> blood the entire night? Damn. Anyway, before we talk about the match, hello to Astrid, who's joining us here. Astrid, thank you for joining us on Ring Respect Radio. Looking forward to catching the uh, WWE's NXT Heat Wave uh, po- or preview show that they've got coming up with Stephanie Hypes. I believe that, Astrid, that comes out tomorrow or Saturday. And then, of course, Sunday is WWE's NXT Heat Wave, so you're going to be able to catch the post show, and they do have a special guest there as well, too. I'm blanking on the name, Astrid. I don't have it right in front of me, so if you can throw that in the chat, I will also let you know that as well, too. That's saying these cameras are worth $50,000, Cole. <laughs> 50000 Canadian dollars there, my friend. Um, excited for it. Yes, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And the special guest on that show is Joey Carney from the Angle Podcast. So there we go. Make sure you're looking out for that. I know that when we get to the end of the show here, I got a couple other plugs for us as well, too. So stay tuned for that. Uh, But talking about this match, Papa Smokes, uh, we got the Thickness Reed Matthews taking on the Dixie Dragon. And the Thickness picking up a very big victory. And what a battle that we got here. One of the Dixie Dragon's best one-on-one matchups that he's had in a while. Not only that, but Reed Matthews really proved himself here that night, taking on the big man, taking on the seasoned veteran, really taking it to him and proving himself a worthy adversary in PPW. No, oh, and this is another big man match. That well, There are two sides of beef in here and a lot of weight getting thrown around. Dixie Dragon's very, very strong. He's even stronger than he looks. And he's almost impossible to move. You, you saw at the beginning of the match, running, bouncing in the ropes, Matthews was coming up trying to do the shoulder block, and Dixie Dragon doesn't move, man. He looks like a brick wall. And uh, the you, you knew that Matthews was kind of thinking, holy, I don't see many guys just don't get moved by my shoulder block at all when I'm going at him super hard. And you could see that this was going to be a clash of strength and tenacity and uh, Reed Matthews coming through. So those short Kings kind of splitting their victories in this one, but uh, you know, it's not counting towards uh, being noticed for the tag team title match, I suppose, but still good that the short Kings got one of their guys victorious in a match against the split members of the brotherhood. One other thing I wanted to bring up Munson You got sprayed by Dixie Dragon's red mist. Does this now mean that you might be turning towards the Brotherhood, Munson? Is that the kind of effect that that (laughs) mist has? I'm going to keep my eye on you, man. I don't trust you all of a sudden. You got enough of that mist on you. You're going to be turning to the Brotherhood right away, aren't you? I I think you've got your your, your lines crossed here, Papa Smokes. Uh, Come on. This is good wholesome bobby munson the people have been seeing for years and years i don't have a dark side whatsoever papa smokes it's nothing but smiles happiness love for all you know how it is i mean love for all except for ulsc you know fuck ulsc you know but uh you know how it is i mean i just i couldn't bring myself to to do that but at the same time i am an impartial person papa smokes you know that i give the benefit of the doubt when it comes to professional wrestling if I see good, wholesome, pure professional wrestling in that ring, I'll get behind it. Hold on here. Hold on here, Bass. No, no, no. Enough of the allegation. Bobby, Dixie, Munson, Creed. No, no, no. There has <laughs> never been anything uh, like this. This is not going to happen. They're not needing a personal cameraman. They don't need Munson management services. They're doing just fine on their own. I don't think that they're going to be giving me a call anytime soon, so don't expect any sort of shenanigans from Bobby, it's never going to happen. I promise you that. Um, Munson, your, your voice even sounds a bit different tonight, Munson. There's something about, there's something off about you tonight. I don't know what it is. I've been doing this podcast with you for a lot of years, and what's changed with you tonight? 
I got I I I caught my usual cold pop smokes. That's it. It's, I'm getting over a cold here that was oh, acquired sure. by the sure. PPW Nation. That was what it is. The PPW Nation got me sick because I was in there in amongst the crowd, you know, shaking hands, hugging people, loving the world because that's what I do. I can't believe these allegations against me. I would never in a million years side with the Brotherhood and do dastardly things that's just not my nature you know that papa spoke come on how long you know me my man auntie collins is in the house auntie collins would have my back auntie collins has ever only ever known smiling happy bobby there's no way that auntie collins would even believe you papa spokes or basser for that matter that i could possibly ever side with the evil of ppw it's just, just not happening I don't know. I don't know. I'm hearing your words. I'm hearing what sound like empty words, but I'm going to be watching you. If, it, if one of your eyes starts dripping that red stuff, or if you get that red stain about it, we got a problem, man. I'm going to kick you out of ringside at PPW. We can't have that. I don't I like it. Look at this. Bobby Brotherhood Munson. Come hey. on. And now, now renaming me on top of it. No, no, no. It's all about the money bass, the money Munson. Money months, not brotherhood months. No chance. Oh, not that's, that's a glimpse of the future, I think. I don't know. We're not we're not igniting the months and mafia around here. It's not going to happen. It's it's definitely not happening. But moving on from there, we got a couple of more matches to talk about here, Papa folks. That's six down, <laughs> two more to go. Uh, we got first of all, we come back from the intermission of the night, and we've got Michael Allen, Richard Clark. He's coming out to the ring. He's all sorts of pissed off because of what El Asesino has been pulling off. And I don't blame him. This is exactly the kind of shit that Asesino does. He continues to beat on people with chairs, with weapons, anything he can to get under their skin. And he's been doing it to the man with the longest name in professional wrestling. And this time, Mark was an amity calling him out. Come out here. Quit being a coward. Come and fight me like a man. Then all of a sudden, out comes El Asesino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here comes El Asesino with a neck brace and a sling and a cane. Where the fuck did he get a cane from anyway, Papa Spokes? Like, Jesus Christ. Who's carrying a cane in the back that threw this thing to El Asesino of all things? Like, you know him better than I do. What kind of bullshit shenanigans were going on that someone handed that shit over to him? Do you think someone handed it over, Munson? You were at the same show as me when El Asesino beat up an 85-year-old guy in the crowd that one time. <laughs> You think he's beyond pushing over an old man and stealing his key? <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, I guess you make a strong point there, Fobs Volks. This bastard. He was not fucking brave for any yes. sort of ring of that. Yes. Oh, you do. You yes. guys are so full of baloney. God damn it. That's man. true. No way. Like, so we come, first of all, for those who didn't see it yet, because you, you're waiting for the YouTube and you don't mind being spoiled. So Asesino brings his supposedly crippled ass into the ring and he's taking his sweet time. Oh my God. I've never seen this guy move slower. A snail passed him while we were waiting for his ass to get to the ring. Finally gets in there after he poke it away at and smacking poor JG Muller there at ringside with his cane, making JG Muller get down to his knees with the microphone so that Asesino could talk into it. And he's saying that he is unable to compete because of an injury that he sustained and that he wouldn't be able to fight Michael Allen Richard Clark. And now all of a sudden, we can go back to this whole thing that we talked about when we saw the match unfold. It's been brought up here on the show before. He showed sympathy towards Zoe Sager, and Zoe Sager was who El Asesino called upon to fight Michael Allen, Richard Clark in this very match, Papa Smokes. I want to get your thoughts on this. Asesino and Zoe Seger continued kind of partnership, uh, so to speak, that we have never seen out of Asesino before, as well as this blood feud that's going on between Michael Allen, Richard Clark, and El Asesino. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm equally intrigued as everybody else about this sort of uneasy alliance, or I don't even think it's uneasy. It's a little alliance between El Asesino and the intangible one, Zoe Sager. Didn't see this coming. Know that the two are acquainted with each other as fellow wrestlers and such. Didn't realize that they were going to be forming a tag team, forming some sort of an alliance with each other. And out comes Asesino to watch Zoe Sager's match against Michael Allen, Richard Clark which was quite a fine match, by the way. I think that these two have probably tangled in a ring in some form before, but 
this was a quite a competitive match. And for all the physical gifts of Michael Allen, Richard Clark, that magnificent physique and a really excellent wrestling style that the fans in Saskatoon have been loving for many, many years back since he was Orange Crush. Um, th this was actually a really fine match. And we've talked before about how Zoe Sager has come along as a wrestler, improved tremendously in, in the time that PPW has been around, was always good, but really is better now. And I think it's because she stopped caring what the fans think. She's in it for Zoe Sager now, and that's it. And maybe that's the area that her and El Asesino come together on, where the minds meet, so to speak. Neither of them gives a damn about the PPW Nation, which is too bad. But that's the way they're going to, that's the way they see themselves getting to the success that they want in PPW. So, very interesting after last time. El Asesino carrying out Sager out of the ring on his back. Now this time coming down, almost looking like a bit of a mentor sitting at ringside and uh, and and kind of overseeing, which was it was something that was quite a fine match between Sager and, and Alan Clark. You have to admit, Munson, they had it going on in the ring for quite a while there. Zoe wasn't uh, intimidated by the big muscles of Clark whatsoever. No, not at all. Again, uh, Zoe, again, just about did got the job done on more than one occasion here in this matchup. Coming up only barely short of winning this matchup to Michael yeah. Albert Clark in what was the probably the most competitive match of the entire evening. Fantastic between the two of them. I got to say, it, it was a great match. It was a solid match despite the stuff yes. going on with Mark and uh, in El Asesino. Zoe and Mark put on a hell of a showing. Mark coming up with the victory. And then again, Al Asesino showing his true colors, takes off the, takes down the cane, takes off the brace, takes off the sling, and he comes and beats the living piss out of Michael Allen Richard Clark viciously, very viciously. And this was one of those moments, Pop Smokes, where I know I would have got hurt in the process. And I know I have a job to do there, but I just about put that camera down. And stepped in to take a bit of a bullet because I could. It was turning my stomach. Uh, Bass are saying Zoe debuts the Saskatoon driver, or was it the Alberta driver? Yeah, we did see that uh, Canadian uh, Canadian driver. Is that what it's called? The, technically, the Canadian driver, whatever it is, that move that you know. It's it's cool if it's done every once in a while, and that's why I'm glad it's not done very often in a PPW ring. Makes it that much more exciting. So it was really cool when Zoe was able to hear hit that one. But yeah. Um, Thoughts on the blood brewing between Michael Allen, Rich Clark, El Asesino? I mean, even you, to a degree, Pop Smokes, got to think that Asesino's crossing a line a little bit here. Oh, he's crossing the line already. Right. He, he's erasing the whole line in the sand. He doesn't even give a damn at all. And to say that things are brewing or heating up is is wild because it's been heating up for a long time. And, and we've talked about this before. Asesino and Alan Clark have never gotten along. Do you remember, Munson, we used to work for another company before PPW for years before that. They never got along there either. It's not a, a storyline. It's not a plot line that fans like to talk about and everything. These are two guys that don't like each other. There's nothing that needs to be written. They can't stand each other. Asesino's Got a thorn in his side about Michael Allen Clark. I assume it's something about what they get paid or their spot on the card or their reception from the fans, some kind of personal or, or professional jealousy of some sort, whatever it happens to be. Asesino doesn't need a reason. If he thinks somebody is in his way or he thinks somebody's going to try and hold him back from his goals and what he wants, he's going to eliminate them. Period. The, no other words need to be said. And you've seen the violence of his attacks always coming out with the chair, always from behind against Michael Allen, Richard Clark. And, you know, you've heard this term before. Something's done with malice. He hits someone with malice. That's the way Asesino strikes. It's not striking to hurt the guy. It's not striking to make a loud noise. It's not striking someone to have it look good. 
it's to hurt the opponent. It's to try and injure them. This is completely malicious what El Asesino does. That's why the fans' reactions are so extreme sometimes because it's so violent that it's kind of almost stomach churning in a way, or it's almost disturbing a little bit, especially when Clark, <clears throat> excuse me, Clark is such a fan favorite in the PPW Nation. They just can't stand Asesino and the attacks that he makes, and they're going to keep hating him until something drastic happens. And yeah, and before we talk about the last match, I just want to mention too, it's so heated. The fans hate him so much that this, we're talking about, you know, there was a fan there at ringside pop smokes and even you and I were kind of getting a little worried that things were going to get out of hand because El Asesino getting in the face of one of the fans, the fans started to puff out the chest and get a little pushy. And you know, as much as I do, we've seen it before. El Asesino doesn't care what side of the fence you're sitting on. He'll take a swing at anybody. And this guy started getting into a shoving match with El Asesino, and it was getting very heated very quickly. Oh, and we brought this up before. Some fans at live wrestling shows don't obey the boundaries. They want to be part of the show. They want some of the spotlight to come on them. And they think, well, I can yell, I, I can cheer, I can jeer, I can mock, I can make all kinds of remarks to these wrestlers, and they can't do anything. Well, that's not exactly true. <laughs> they usually choose not to, but you better be careful who you do that to. And if you ever want to puff up and, and try and be a big guy and try and be a tough guy, try and take the spotlight off of a, 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 a villainous character such as El Asesino. No character. Again, why am I even using that word? This this was as real as it gets. You better be willing to accept the consequences of your actions. And that's what this guy did. He wouldn't stop. He was yelling. He was trying to come over the barrier. He was trying to do all kinds of shit. And uh, as you know, it had enough of it. I told you, I know this guy. I've watched his matches for years. After he finished with Michael Allen, Richard Clark, he turned around, started coming through the ropes, and I I knew it immediately. I said, he's going to get that guy. He's going to get him. And, oh, he did. Mm -hmm. Get him, he did. As Bass saying, I was uh, surprisingly chirpy to that guy, considering I was only on water that night. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, but we do want to talk about the the main event here, so we're going to get to that in just one second, because, again, right after us, Papa Smokes, as always, we got the Honor Ramble coming up. Today, Auntie Collins is going to be joined by Kimmy Soko as they're celebrating Independence Day. Happy 4th of July to all of our American viewers across the globe. Come and party 4th of July style with Kimmy and Auntie Collins coming up on the Honor Ramble right following Ring Respect Radio. Uh, but, yes, now it's time, Papa Smokes, and we don't get to do this often enough. It's time for the main! event to the evening this match is scheduled for one fall and one fall. is for the ppw championship of the world yes we had the champion cutthroat colton kelly defending against the former champion Sheik akbar shabazz and jesus christ the word dusty finish papa smokes we couldn't have been laid out any better than what we saw on this particular night another hellacious battle between these two blood rivals, as we said many times, that this time Shiki did not have the champion's advantage in this matchup, taking each other to the limit. And once again, she goes back to his dastardly deeds. He goes and punches out our referee in this matchup. Referee is completely out. I'm at this point, I'm like, son of a bitch. Like, this is what was getting him disqualified to keep him the title. This needs to be an immediate stop to the match. Shiki's done. This is it. He's done. This is his last chance. Somebody come out here and put a stop to this. So what happens? She All of a sudden, another referee comes out. Doesn't go in Sheik's favor. So he takes another official out, pretty much. Or no, sorry, no. The official was out. The other official comes out. The three count happened. That is what ended up happening. Three count happens in favor of Sheik. Sheik grabs the belt, but then Crash Crimson comes out. PPW uh, Crash Crimson comes out, part of PPW management, and says it's not happening like this. He saw it. He saw that the ref was taken out by Sheik Akbar Shabazz and that another official come out to make that three count. And again, 
it was Sheik's time to be disqualified and have it count against him for once, Papa Smokes. He did not have the advantage of the champion this time around. This should have never happened. Crash Crimson ordered the match to be restarted, even allowing Sheik the benefit of the doubt to have the match restarted instead of a pure disqualification in this one. And as he does that, Sheiky decides to take matters into his own hands. He attacks Crash Crimson, or tried to, but Crash Crimson blocking and getting a couple of shots in on Akbar before Akbar ultimately nut shots Crash Crimson and then gives him two headshots of the PPW Championship and busts him wide open. Sheiky then demands J.G. Muller declare him as an new PPW Champion and walks off with the belt. Damn it, Papa Smokes. I don't even know if I should be calling Sheik champion at this point in time because there is so much controversy surrounding the ending of this matchup that I'm not ready to even accept that Sheiky did officially win the belt. Well, I think you should start getting used to it, Munson, because this match happened. One, two, three happened, and the announcement was made after the match. There's no going back now. Just... For all the fears of the PPW Nation and all the nightmares of the PPW Nation, oh, it's come true. The Sheik is back. And what a match. Colton Kelly, such a great champion, such a great wrestler, such a great guy. And it was close. It was so, so close. But the Sheik has been there before. I, I liken it. I liken some of these tag team matters. Pardon me, some of these title matches to the playoffs in hockey or football, that's when it all goes on the line. That's when you you forget about um, you forget about being conservative, you forget about holding back a little bit. You go for it. And I think that's what the sheet does every time he knows that the referees are gonna be a little bit lax in calling stuff when it's a heavyweight championship match, just like in the hockey. They put the whistle in the pocket for a while. You pretty much have to pull out a gun to get a penalty in the in the playoffs. You wouldn't know about this months and you watch soccer. They they create their own penalties in soccer, but it's like that in, in PPW wrestling, I think, too. The refs are going to let things go a little bit further, and the Sheik Akbar Shabazz rides that as far as he can ride it, not just a little bit further but as far as he can. And in this case, he wrote it right to the PPW title. Again, there's a lot of questions and a lot of answers to be had when it comes to the championship. Uh, for now, I guess officially it's being said that Sheik is the champion, but I will wait for official word from PPW management. I'm sure we'll find out at the next show what the declaration is going to be. But I guess when they say the possession is nine tenths of the law Sheiky's holding that belt it's in his possession so like it or lump it unfortunately Akbar is at the top of the mountain again and we have a very interesting talking point at the next PPW live show on August the 17th so make sure to get your tickets for that uh, but that wraps up the Great Canadian Rager it wraps up Ring Respect Radio for this week as well too hope you guys have enjoyed it uh, I know that we are now in the month of July, so we owe you guys a trip through the territories. And I'm thinking either, what do you think, Bob Smokes, next Thursday or the Thursday after that for a trip through the territories? Uh, either or. Let's just decide soon so I, we can get watching matches and doing our research. All right. Sounds good. Uh, let's go for next Thursday. I don't have anything on the agenda for us yet, so let's plan for next Thursday. I will uh, talk to you after. Or we'll figure out which uh, territory we're going to do and we'll bring the fans another trip through the territories for next Thursday night. How about? Sounds good, my brother. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, it's been a great show. And uh, along with the great show comes a lot of a lot of expenses. You know, it gets kind of costly when we do these things, especially when I throw that ticker up on the screen. So Papa Smokes can let the people know where they can find them. Oh, that beautiful ticker that I've got there. All right. I can be found in Elon Musk's free speech wonderland known as X. I am at Smokes underscore Papa. You can also find me in different kind of playland known as twitch i am at papa underscore smokes underscore that's where you can find bob smokes as for myself bobby munson on the x i'm at real bobby munson instagram and threads it's at video bros sk and over on that twitch thing it's at video bro underscore bobby munson 
Where can you find me coming up? Well, this Saturday, you're going to be able to join me, Andy Collins, Kimmy Sokol, and Mark Robson for the Money in the Bank post show. Because, you know, I got to be the Canadian representative on that one scene. It's coming live from Toronto. Uh, then you're going to be able to catch me again on Sunday with Point of View, where myself and Mark Robson are talking all about Euro 2024. Hopefully, we'll be all smiles because England plays on Saturday. So hopefully, they pull off another victory and earn their spot in the semifinals. I predicted their last game very correctly here on the show. I said that it was going to be a 2 1 victory from England and that they would come back from a what? They'd be down by one. They would come back with the next two to go on to be victorious. That short clip has actually got near 4,000 views on YouTube. So in that chat, I also put down that I think England's going to win 3-1 this coming Saturday. They're going to score the opening goal. It's going to get tied up, and they're going to bag two more, the 3-1 victory. If I'm this damn lucky to predict two in a row, I'm going after the lottery ticket, uh, lottery numbers next. But you can also catch me, of course, on Saturdays with the man beside me, the man with the angelic voice, as we call the matches on PPW on Prairie Pro Wrestling's YouTube channel. And then again, next Thursday, right here on the channel, where you can find more Ring Respect Radio and a trip through the territories. So stay tuned for that. Thank you once again for joining us here on the show. We'll catch you in a week's time. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>